Hello, fiber friends. I'm Evie, I spin yarn, and I make things from yarn. And today, I'm talking about those pests that get into my wool supply that I spin from that I don't want pests in. This has been a highly requested topic, how to store your fibers, your wool, your stash, how to store that so that it is safe and you won't have any pesty problems. So that's what we're gonna talk about today. I'm gonna to break it down for several different pests and we're definitely going to end up focusing on the moths because those are the scariest. So let's get started and talk about fiber storage. While I talk, I am going to be spinning. I have my Enid Ashcroft spindle here. I'm working on this fiber that I dyed. This is some um, Cheviot that I uh, dyed this colorway. It's just very autumny, cozy. So I'm sort of comfort spinning while we talk about this because this is terrifying. <laughs> We all know that, you know, wool, especially if it's hand dyed, <sighs> rare breeds, sometimes it's very sentimental. We want to protect it and keep it safe and we don't want any mm, nasty surprises when we go looking for our next project. When I say pests, there are a couple different things. I sort of, I guess, mentally categorize them differently. We have the things that want to make a nest in the wool. We have the things that want to eat the wool. And we have the things that sort of come along with the wool. <laughs> so let's talk about the nesters first. That would mainly be rodents. Yep, rodents. If you have mice, they want a cozy warm place to have baby mice and what I, I mean, personally, if I was a mouse, I would absolutely go looking for a nice, cozy, warm fleece to burrow into. That would be like the dream mansion. The Barbie dream house for a mouse is a nice, warm fleece. <laughs> so we have a cat who's a very good mouser. Um, and she has proven herself in that way. So for, for me, that's been a bit of a reassurance because I know if we ever did have rodents in our home, she would let us know right away just with her behavior <laughs> or gifts. Um, <laughs> but you do want to watch out, especially if you have your fiber somewhere that's very out of the way, like a basement or an attic or a crawl space or I really don't recommend a shed or an outdoor storage solution, but sometimes if if that's what you need to do for the moment, uh, keep an eye out for rodents. The next kinds of pests are the ones that eat the wool. That includes carpet beetles and wool moths. <sighs> they are the most terrifying. <laughs> it's actually not the adult beetles or the adult moths that eat the wool or other protein fibers. The beetles um, will eat any animal protein fiber. The moths particularly go for wool, but it's not the adults that do, it's the larvae that do. And so if you see the adults around, they're there to lay their eggs. And when those eggs hatch, they're going to be larvae, and the larva is what eats the wool. And in the case of carpet beetles, also silk, uh, they they also go for fur. Um, if you if you have trophy animals, if that's a thing you enjoy, they can get on there as well and cause problems. So yeah, they are destructive to the wool itself because they eat it. We don't want them at all, ever, ever. So if you see an adult around. Uh, definitely get rid of it. Identify it if you can, take a picture. Um, confirm that it's a actually a uh, carpet beetle or a wool moth. The internet has all that information so you can identify and make sure that's what you're dealing with. Um, and so the the we're gonna talk about uh, ways to deal with these things in just a moment. Um, but yeah, the, those are the ones that are the worst because they will eat your wool and you can't get it back once they've eaten it. I know that people want to save their stash and that's usually the first question people say is, oh my goodness, I have found moths in my in my fiber stash. 
how can I save my stash? And it's like, well, so the problem is that they've been eating the fibers and they've been eating buffet style. So it's very random. <laughs> I mean, in a sweater, you might see a, a hole that looks odd, um, and they could have been like in that spot eating it. But when you spin your fibers, there's no way to determine exactly which fibers have been munched on. Um, and so you're going to have short bits, you're going to have weak fibers, and the casings that the larva um, convert themselves and metamorphosize into moths. Those are all in there. All that stuff is in there as well as the poop that they, you know, like animals have been living and eating the wool. If I were to find an infestation, it hasn't happened to me yet. We did have grain moths in the past, but I haven't had wool moths to deal with. My sincere sympathies to anyone who has, my personal way to attack it, my personal way would be to get rid of anything that I actively see the moths in and anything that is like trash, like out of the house, gone. And things that are adjacent that I don't see moths in that perhaps could have had eggs laid in, uh, that I might try to salvage. But anything with an active there are moths in here I'm I'm just getting it out of the house and and I might burn it with fire <laughs> I really actually have a phobia of moths like a true actual phobia I have an instinctual fight or flight response when I see a moth it usually results in flight and I will actually run away like I will um Without consciously choosing to run away, I will suddenly be aware that I am running away. <laughs> I don't. I have a very bad response to moths. They terrify me. I hate it. I hate it. Yeah. So I am probably a little bit overly vigilant about keeping things safe from moths. So I want to tell you how I do that, but I also real quick want to mention two other things. And these are the things that may come with the wool sort of adjacent and that would be canary staining and mold and mildew so with canary staining it is a yellow stain that cannot be scoured out it's uh, part of the wool once it happens and it's the result of bacteria activity temperature and um, moisture and it stains the wool yellow so it will progress and become more and more yellow. So the best thing to do is to halt it with a scour. And if you are going to dye it, know that you may not get a perfectly uniform color because the canary areas may be a little more resistant to the dye. But if you're okay with a variegated kind of a color, maybe go into the oranges or the yellows and blend it up and you won't notice. Um, if you wanted to still continue to use that fleece. So then the other is mold and mildew. If you have a raw fleece that you put away wet or damp, and remember, wool can absorb a lot of water without feeling wet. And a lot of, a lot of sheep are sheared in the spring, so you can end up with some damp conditions that the wool is, is just damp. I mean, sheep sweat and it can happen, right? So if you stuff that into a plastic bag and put that away in your stash damp, you can go come back to it later and be sadly surprised to find that it has gone moldy or mildewy. So um, that's one that is definitely in the camp of saying, hey, <laughs> let's scour things as soon as they come in. Another I guess that leads into my other point, which is just overall prevention, because the best way to get rid of these pests is to not have to deal with them in the first place. For one thing, most of the clothes that I have in my wardrobe, I either purchase um, at thrift, thrift stores secondhand or I make myself. So if I am getting thrifted fabric or clothing, I always wash it. That's just a good idea in general, but especially if it's wool, I definitely will do a good, um, 
a good wash to make sure that there's nothing hitchhiking <laughs> taking a ride into my home that way um, and then the same goes for fleece now I, I would say that it's a good idea to scour fleece right away. If there's a canary issue, it's gonna halt that from happening. You'll be able to open things up, get a good look and see what's going on. It's a good idea to do that. But that being said, sometimes we just don't have the time <laughs> to scour every new fleece that comes in. I do have a couple. Um, so I, I keep them stored where they can breathe. That's important for a raw fleece because it does have a lot of moisture in it. The lanolin is in there. There can be some sweat from the sheep and all that. So I have one in a pillowcase and then I have a couple others that are in, um, one is in a, a bag that's kind of open because I, I dig in there frequently and pull little bits out. And so it's, it's got some airflow. Raw fleece should not be sealed and stored airtight. That's just a lot of stuff that can kind of fester in there. And uh, yeah, we don't want to do that. Raw fleece needs to breathe. So, but other things that you are sure are fully dried, maybe they've been scoured, maybe they're processed, maybe it's like dyed braids and stuff like that. Um, that for sure could go in something airtight. The vacuum seal bags, I know some people who absolutely swear by those. I personally don't have them, but they like the reassurance that if they have a bunch of wool in a vacuum seal bag, um, they're gonna know if something chews its way in because it won't be sealed anymore, it's gonna puff up. So it's kind of like a little alarm detection system. <laughs> um, so that is a thing to consider. But for the most part, I keep my fiber in two ways. I have things that are close to me because they are my inspiration that I'm about to work on. And I have that in one of the cube storage bins and the cube, I go in there a lot. I open them, I move them around and I go in there a lot. The other things that I have that are a little bit more in a deeper storage are in clear plastic totes. Um, I like the clear ones because they get a little bit of sunlight through the windows. They get a little bit of light through the uh, overhead lights. They're in the basement and there's windows down there. So it's not entirely dark and for some reason that makes me feel like the wool is happier. <laughs> but um, because they're clear I can see if there are any uh, kinds of bug activities taking place in there. I'm gonna see that up on the you know maybe flittering around. <sighs> um, and so there's a visual, uh, but I do go through my stuff frequently, probably every month or two at least. I just dig around, I move things around, I see what's what, and I just keep a good eye on it because I am probably a little extra paranoid, but I'm okay having the reassurance that I've checked it and it's all good. So the other things that I do, um, and I'm going to talk about mothballs in a second because I know people are going to ask about that. But these are some of the other things that I do for uh, my closet where I have some wool sweaters, of course. This I think is probably maybe historical. I'd love to see some information about it. Um, but that's cedar. A cedar lined closet is sort of a traditional thing to do or have and of course a cedar hope chest is is absolutely something people did. Cedar, um, the oils, the smell of the cedar is a deterrent. So it won't kill the moths but they don't like it so they won't be attracted to it and they might fly by and leave your wool alone. <laughs> or whatever is stored in your chest. So you can get some uh, just pieces of cedar. This one just hangs up in the closet. The thing to remember is that eventually it will lose its effectiveness. And so you can sand it to kind of freshen it up and open it up. Or I have some cedar essential oil that you can just kind of drip on there and that freshens it up and that smells like cedar and it smells good. Another thing that I need to uh, get some new ones. So I don't have one to demonstrate. <laughs> Those are pheromone traps. The pheromone traps I think are the gold standard of moth prevention. The pheromone is a smell, it's a chemical that the moths are attracted to to find their mate, 
so they can lay those eggs. So if a moth does get into your area, into your home, your storage, your closet, and it smells that, it's gonna think that it is, you know. So it's gonna fly over there and get stuck in the trap and die. And so it will not be able to go lay eggs in your wool. And that's the goal. So some people have feelings about sticky traps. I do not like sticky traps for rodents. However, for moths, I hate moths and I don't feel bad about it. So I'll put a link to a couple of these things, but the pheromone ones, if you have to pick one thing, I think those pheromone traps are the, the one to do. And um, they are specific. So if you have a pheromone trap for grain moths, the pantry moths, those are awful. We had to throw away half of our pantry. It was terrible. Um, if you if you have one for pantry moths, it's not going to be the same as wool moths. They are different varieties of moths. They have different pheromones. One trap isn't going to cover all of it. It has to be specific for wool moths. And then mothballs. Everybody wonders about mothballs. Mothballs are a poison. I went to the store just to take a good look at the mothballs, and yes, that smell is terrible, but I read on the packages what they're actually intended to do, and they are intended to go into a sealed container with the infested clothing and the chemical, the smell from, I mean, that's the chemical in the, in the mothballs, will kill the moths, the larva, the moths, everything. So it's a treatment for wool moths. It's not a preventative and it, it, it's a terrible smell. Wool is, is going to pick that up and carry that smell with it. Nobody really wants that, right? I don't, I don't, I, I really don't prefer mothballs. I don't like the smell of it. And, um, I think using them as a preventative is not exactly what they're meant to do. And then you have the smell and it's gross. <laughs> I hate it. <laughs> oh, this is a very uncomfortable video for me. So I'm wearing my favorite hat because my hat makes me happy. My spinning makes me happy. I really, 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 really don't like moths um, at all. But for this video, I will say, please go ahead, share <laughs> your solutions, your favorite tips how you store your fibers, how you make sure that things are safe from any pests. And I will also mention, um, I did talk to, we have a service who comes and uh, does the pest control. I told them I work with wool and I have a lot of wool around and they were like, you're gonna get moths. And I was like, don't even say that. Don't even speak it into the universe. <laughs> um, and they said, well, some things to watch out for. Of course, the regular stuff of just keeping pests out of your home in the first place, like, you know, keeping your tree trimmed so there's no branches leaning on the rooftop and keeping leaf debris away from the foundation of the home. He also said, watch for spiders. If there are spiders, there is a food source for the spiders and sometimes that food source is not something that you see but you'll see the spiders so watch for spiders <laughs> if you have a lot of spiders you might have something else going on that they are snacking on and uh, yeah so prevention 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 and uh, yeah pest control all the things I will do all the things I can do because I, I don't it really truly terrifies me. So this was a very uncomfortable video for me to talk about because I really dislike moths that much. But in this comment section, I will say go ahead and share your horror stories if you have them. Um, let's help each other to avoid any kind of heartbreak, of pest infestation. Let us know your tips. And if you did have moths, how did you deal with it? What would you suggest? That about sums it up was a lot of chatter. I hope it was helpful. I hope we can prevent some heartaches. Um, and I'm gonna go uh, do f some comfort spinning <laughs> right now. <laughs> <sighs> this was rough. Thanks for sticking with me. Leave your comments. Do the YouTube things. I'll see you next time. Happy spinning.
We have a chipmunk who digs in my in my flower pots. False alarm, I do know that cat. He's from two doors down. He's an indoor or outdoor cat. His name is Cheeto. I didn't recognize him because Cheeto has a lion cut now and he's very fancy. Normally he looks like a, a cheese puff. <laughs> Maybe he's after chipmunks. I don't know. All right, focus back to the video. Some things that are particularly Carpet beetles. When we. You know, the internet has fiber in my lipstick. 